Welcome back to another episode of Bossy, Brilliant and Badass. I'm Lisa Lindsay here with my inventive co-host, Liz Green. Hey, Liz. Hey, Lisa. How's it going today? It's going. Um, it's <laughs> the day after the election. <laughs> I was going to say, are we going to mention this? <laughs> people that listen to this in a, a year from now are going to say like, huh, what? Huh? <laughs> Yes, it is the day after the election. I wasn't sure if we're going to talk about it, but I, I, I did. I wasn't sure either, but I feel like it probably explains my energy <laughs> today, mm -hmm. um, which is nervous. <laughs> so, because we're still waiting, yes. but you know, close, it's close. It's, oh my God, I can't. Like Liz, I can't. I can't. Like I have no words for how much I can't I right now. I was talking to a few people, and they were saying, "Oh." I I'm so excited. I can't hardly. And I'm like, oh, 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 don't speak too soon. Right. We remember what happened last time. I can't. Not, I just, I just not speak too soon. <laughs> so. I just have to, I just have to, I'm like, you know what? I'm glad we were recording today. I have a couple of other things on my calendar. Um, so there's things for me to get my mind off of this. You yes. know, our guests, um, we actually are recording this after our uh, interview with our guest and she was amazing. So I am amazing. totally we... looking forward to, to you guys hearing that conversation. So I'm just gonna move past the fact that it's- Just move past it, let it go for now. <laughs> Maybe yeah, next no. week we'll have some other words, um, but for now we'll just kind of put that in the back seat. But yeah, gonna... I'm, I'm super excited for people to hear uh, Julie's uh, episode today. I got so much out of it. I learned so much. I, I was thinking, oh, I got to write this down. I'm like, yeah, I can watch the podcast later. <laughs> yeah, read the transcript, man. <laughs> yeah, right? The transcript's right there. Exactly. Um, yeah, so let me just take a moment and just tell you guys who she is. Her name is Julie Ciardi, and she's a successful side hustle coach and the host of Ignite Your Side Hustle podcast. Very cool name. Mm -hmm. um, so she helps entrepreneurs start and grow their side hustle to achieve their goals and their dreams. And she was the VP of a Fortune 100 company and spent 18 years in corporate marketing before starting her own successful business. And she talks a lot about that today, you know, the highs and the lows, which is fascinating. And so anyway, she shares with us a bit about um, that, her personal journey, as well as what tools we can use to nurture our leads, actually find leads, nurture our leads, and other ways to create and sustain a healthy business. And she talks about four core things, which is so informative. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. So welcome, Julie. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Yeah. So why don't we start off just briefly with you sharing with us a little bit about your journey and how you made the jump from corporate to having your own sustainable, successful business. I love sharing this story because when I was looking to make this move, hearing other people's stories is what helped inspire me to stay the course and to take some pretty big leaps of faith, but I saw people go ahead of me. So I love being able to share this story. So hopefully it inspires some of your listeners to kind of think outside the box too, because, you know, my story is kind of boring from the beginning because it was the, the classic story of overachiever, you know, who, you know, does well in school and gets the MBA and then goes to work for a, a company with the goal that you're going to keep on moving up the ladder of that company. I, you know, I'm not a spring chicken here. I'm 46. And I have to say that I did not see many examples at that time when I was leaving college, getting my master's of doing anything different than that. You know, I really didn't know any entrepreneurs. I think I always had the entrepreneurial spirit, but I really, you know, didn't see any examples. So I kind of followed the path that I was supposed to, but very quickly in corporate, I started to feel 
like I didn't belong always. I always felt like I wasn't fitting into the corporate environment and the kind of that rat race. And, but I'm also an overachiever. So I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get to that next level, I'm gonna get to that next level. I'm never gonna stay kind of, you know, stagnant. And so I kind of followed that path at this fortune, really it was a fortune 100 company uh, in the US. And I just felt this pull that I was going to do something else someday. Because in that journey of the corporate, climbing the corporate ladder, I had three children. You know, I got married, had the three kids, became a mom, um, totally was loving that, but still felt unfulfilled. And I actually felt guilty about that, to be honest with you. I mean, here I was, you know, in this company with a lot of opportunity, you know, rising pretty quickly, you know, multiple six figure, you know, job with lots of uh, potential growth, three kids living the life. And I looked around and I was feeling empty. And I got to tell you that I felt very guilty for having those, those thoughts, but I just knew I was made for something more than what I was doing. And the toxicity was really growing was really growing. The further up you get in these, some of these companies, the, the top of the decisions you're asked to, you know, having to lay people off and all of the things. And I was just done. And I turned to my husband and I said, I, I want to do something different. And it sparked this whole journey that we can kind of get into. I'll pause and see if you have any questions about that. But I think there's so many of us that especially women, you know, we think we're supposed to do certain things. We should be a certain way. We should, you know, be growing this career and all these things. And it was very, um, a very challenging time to have this epiphany that I'm, wait, I got all the way here 18 years in, I, this is not really where my journey ends. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely does to me. To- what was, totally it, what makes was your sense. husband's reaction? Well, my husband, you know, God bless him. He's a, he's a police officer. And so I was the primary breadwinner. I was the primary breadwinner. So talk about the guilt really coming in because I had to not only say, look, I really want to take a chance and pursue my own thing, but it requires me to walk away from a multiple six figure job, (laughs) right? Which was really challenging. And I think that, you know, one of the things that might be helpful for your listeners is that we made some pretty bold moves to make this happen. So he wasn't opposed to me pursuing something that lit me up as, you know, we would say like, I'm going to go pursue something that lights me up more. But he was wanted to make sure, of course, as, as did I, that we were going to be financially okay to do that. And so that usually does not mean that you're burning the bridges and jumping ship from the job straight away. You've got to be building something on the side if you're not able to just completely walk away from that business. And so uh, from your job. So uh, we started, I started to build something on the side, but the other thing that we did was we kind of took a look around and we said, wait a minute, you know, we've got this huge house. We've been living this particular lifestyle. It's been great, but it's handcuffed me to Mm -hmm. this job in corporate. What if we took a step back? Yes. And so I said, what if we took a step back? You know, in, in, when you think about society, It's like you start with maybe the apartment and then the house and then the bigger house and then you're the trips and then you're doing this. And it's kind of like this this progression upwards, if you will, like always moving forward and up, right? And I said, what if we took a couple of steps backwards so that we could start going up on a different path? So we ended up, believe it or not, we downsized. We sold our home. We downsized. We made some some shifts and some changes. Just the selling of the home reduced our uh, mortgage and taxes by 60%. Wow. And our accountant said, you know what? It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. And it really opened our eyes. So, okay, you know what? There are ways that we can be smart about this while I'm building something on the side and kind of create that bridge, if you will, to be able to exit corporate without putting ourselves, you know, in, in, a, in a lot of trouble. Right. So just being very intentional about that. Did I want to leave like that hot second? Yes. It was two years later. It was a solid two years later from that point that I ended up actually leaving corporate. And I'm so glad that I did. I took the time to be intentional about that. 
You know, Julie, what you're saying just really, really resonates with me. I mean, my path was the corporate path as well. And I also grew up in the Caribbean. So from a societal standpoint, it's very much about um, what where you sit in an organization and definitely going up in that way. And I got to be honest, you know, growing in the, growing up in the Caribbean, um, being told that the traditional path is the way when you start thinking and feeling it really isn't like this really isn't for me um the weight and the pressure of what other people might think about what you're doing is is also another obstacle right because you talked about the financial you talked about the guilt being a mom but it's also the weight and the pressure of your circle what your circle looks like and what they think about what you're doing because are you crazy <laughs> are you crazy and it's the same for me six figures um and real doing really well to truly truly step back and do something that is insane but like you said lights me up fulfills me make me feel better about what i'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis even when it's hard so that's I, I love that i love your story i say all the time here that i did not do what you did and the rest of everybody else did which was plot plan it out i just decided one day i'm out i'm done <laughs> But that is, but honestly, that is one of the things I think it's one of the things that black women really have to deal with in the workplace. It's, it gets to be a lot harder for us. And um, I know people say, oh, you know, before, <laughs> before you leave men um, physically, you've left mentally. And I think I was gone for two years before I actually left. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm right with you. And it's so interesting when you said about what, about what other people think. While I wish, I mean, you know, our whole path plays out the way it's supposed to. Right. Yeah. And if I, you know, I say, I'd love to go back and do this way earlier than I did. Right. Cause I ended up leaving corporate, you know, at age, you know, 44, or 43 or whatever. It's like, but being older, I didn't let what other people think stop me. Had I tried this in my twenties, then a whole other ball game, mm -hmm. a whole other ball game, being a little bit older, you know, it was, it was a little bit easier, but it was the, the people thinking I was crazy. Let me tell you was, I mean, I, like everyone thought I was crazy, including, it was so funny, the accountant that I was beginning to work with for my business. He was like, are you sure you want to do this? And I quickly got a different accountant, right? Because <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you got to surround yourself. Like when you're going to make these big, bold moves, You've got to surround yourself. Like your circle is awesome and your friends and your family, even your spouse, mm -hmm. they're not always going to understand. And so a huge tip I would leave for people too, is like, make sure that you're surrounding yourself. Like the fact that you're listening to this podcast is showing that you are making sure that you're surrounding yourself, whether it's through what you're consuming or it's through other people that you're meeting, you know, that are actually on that path and that journey, because it is so important to have that as, cause you're going to be times where people are going to like, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing now? I, I, that's what I always get. So what are you doing now? You know, people not <laughs> understanding it, right. People totally got it. Me working in a you know corporate marketing job, but now what I'm doing. So it's so important to surround yourself with people that are going to, you know, get excited with you when you have those wins because a lot of your circle probably won't even know what that win really is. You know, when I tell right. my husband, like, I just had an awesome launch. And he's like, what sure. is a launch? <laughs> what, what, what did you launch? <laughs> you know, so really surround yourself with people that understand what, where you're going and what you're doing. 100%, 100%. Absolutely. And when the chips are down, those people will be there to lift you up. Oh, yes. So and there were some tears. Like, I am always about keeping it real. And, you know, because my husband was amazing in, saying, you know, be, being with me and say, okay, you know what, let's do this. Let's do this. But any entrepreneur, well, now I know I didn't know it then I'm like, I'm, I'm smart. I did so well in my corporate job. I was always top of my class. Like I got this. Well, let me tell you from a <laughs> entrepreneurial standpoint, there was no getting it. It was a process. It was a path. I had to, you know, there was so much to learn. It was so different than anything else I'd ever done. And so naturally there's no overnight success and it takes time. 
And so I didn't realize it was going to, I, in my mind, you know, you do the math and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I'll be making my corporate salary in a year. No, a year went by and I was making progress. I was always making progress, but I was not near hitting my corporate salary a year out from starting my business. And my husband would be like, well, when is this going to work? And should you be looking for another job now? Um, maybe go be a consultant, you know, with a, with a bigger company, you know, you don't have to go work for them, but you can be a consultant. Yes, I could have done that. I didn't want to. And it was, you know, some fights and some tears, and that's just the reality. And I will just say that I talked to many women that get stuck in that position where they're not getting that same support, um, you know, from their spouse we are the ones that are going to carry ourselves over the finish line. We have to find that inner strength to keep going. If it's something we really, really want, even if it's the person sitting right next to you, that's questioning whether it's even possible. And yeah. so doing that inner work, really like believing in yourself and keeping your eye on what you want it, 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 now it's great. Now he's like, he's retiring in January. He's like, wow, this thing's amazing. And he, I hear him telling other people, like if we're at a party or something, what I do and like where he never, you know, he didn't know that, you know, before. So it, it, it just takes time, but you've got to be the lead. You've got to be the lead for your own dreams. Right. So what would you say to people that are just starting out? What are some tips and tools that you can offer people? Yeah. Who haven't yet started really on the path. What, what would you say to those people? So if you're just starting and it's just have some grace for yourself, that it is going to be a process. You're going to think, well, I, you know, I want to do this and then you're going to go do it. And maybe it's not exactly what you want to do. You have, I want you guys to know that you all have permission to pivot and shift continuously. I, I don't think I'll ever stop you know, refining and shifting and, and moving in my business and what I'm doing. So that is very different, especially if you're coming from corporate where you're kind of told what we're doing. This is our strategy. This is where we're going. You're kind of more on that execution side of things. And it's just, you're just, you just know what you're doing. And, you know, there's very little deviation, right? I mean, if you're going to take a little deviation and detour in corporate, you've got to have a whole meeting and all the, you know, people have to agree and all the things right with it's you, you've got to realize that you have this permission to continue to refine and pivot what it is that you want to do. And it's going to change. I got to be honest with you guys. My first entry into entrepreneurship was not, maybe not the smartest thing in the world, but it's okay. It started me. It was imperfect action was I actually opened a brick and mortar boutique a brick and mortar physical boutique. Okay. This was like three, four years ago. And guess what? I ended up selling that boutique. It wasn't where I stayed, but here's the thing. I took imperfect action. I followed that breadcrumb to see where it went. I learned so much. Here's, here's the coolest thing. What I learned in creating that business, what I learned in law, you know, creating a brand, developing that brand, bringing it to market and literally getting it to six figures in revenue, not in my pocket, right? A brick and mortar <laughs> right. boutique. Yeah. That's not in your pocket, <laughs> but bringing it to six figures in sales in four months after launching it. Great. I was like, Oh, okay. This was fun. But what I meant to do is to teach people how to do this, not to open boutiques, but to create businesses, to create brands, how to get their, you know, their, their name out there, um, how to do the marketing. Right. And so just take that imperfect action and the next step gets revealed. I, I, I guarantee it won't be like opening a boutique to figure out what that next step is. But my point is that take whatever that next step is, take that imperfect action. Do not wait until you have a website and have, you know, this brand all done. No, test it out and get clients first. Like make sure that you are taking action to actually test out what it is you're trying to bring into the world. Make sure that there are people that want to buy that from you. Make sure that that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get into, you know, coaching, and, or, you know, helping people with, as a VA, a virtual assistant and realize, oh, oh no, this, this is not what I want to do, mm -hmm. but you got to take that action so that, you know, otherwise it's theory, right? So action will help prove out whether or not 
something is going to be right for you or not right for you. And then how you're going to shift and move with it. Do not wait until everything is perfect with logos and websites and all the things take action. That's like a big one that I would say. Um, and then the second is that in, in taking that imperfect action, you've got to start putting yourself out there. Okay. That is probably the hardest part. We're going to stay behind our computers or phones and not put ourselves out there. No one will ever know what you have to offer if you don't put yourself out there and it is going to feel uncomfortable and it is going to feel, you know, like your brain is going to say, why are you doing this? Don't do this. So everyone's going to be judging you, thinking, what are you doing and all the things. But you, if you don't take that step to start putting out into the world, what it is you're doing and being bold about it, going on video, letting people know like, Hey, like, I'm so excited, you know, that I'm about to launch X, Y, Z, or I am now offering, you know, coaching on whatever topic. And I would love to be able to help you like start putting offers out there and start telling people what you do. Even if you're like so scared to do it, though, taking those actions is what's going to help you be able to get to that next step for Excellent. sure. That that that's, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I fully resonate with that as well. I mean, I'm loving everything that you're saying, um, particularly talking about taking that imperfect action where you start in a place where um, you have no idea what you're doing, right? Or whether this is in fact the right thing or the thing that you should be doing. It's only through that action, you're actually going to realize, oh, you know what? This is, this is really what I should be doing. So you yeah. talked about um, recognizing that the shift that you needed to make was to help people figure out how to do the business and how to market their business. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So one thing that I started to, to notice as I started to get into the entrepreneurial space and, you know, really expanded my, my network of people that I knew now that were in all different aspects. Some are in network marketing, some are coaches, some were, you know, offering, um, you know, uh, bookkeeping services, podcast management services, like all the different things. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I started to see out there is that some of the basic business principles that I learned when I was in business school, and then I learned in 18 years of corporate weren't being taught. And it was all about chasing the shiny object of like, learn Pinterest. If you learn Pinterest, your business is going to grow. And oh, but you know, if you go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn, that, that is the place you're going to find new leads and all about, you know, list building and launching and all of these things. And I started to go, how do you create a sustainable, repeatable business? Because the company I was with, they weren't launching and then wondering what they were going to offer next. They weren't like, you know, doing this big splash and then, you know, no, they had a repeatable, sustainable business that could grow. And that's just like, was like red, like flashing lights for me. Like, wait a minute. I don't, cause I guess what? I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, wait a minute. So how am I supposed to build a sustainable, repeatable business in my coaching business? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I had to take a step back. And I, I worked with coaches too. It's so important, right? To, to learn from people that have gone before you. And what I started, I had worked with one coach and she was like, you have 18 years of corporate experience. That's for a reason. Like what, what did you know then that is your, your seeing is not being applied now? And I actually never thought to look backwards at my past experience. I was like running from corporate. So I almost thought like, corporate bad, you know, entrepreneurship good. And so like what I was learning in entrepreneurship seems so different than corporate. And when the bell started to like go off, like, wait a minute, there are some basic business principles that we're not applying here in the entrepreneurial space. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree with that. So so let's get into it. What are the basic mm -hmm. ones? So you yes. said uh, you, you've got to build a repeatable, sustainable business, right? Yeah. Which I totally agree with. Um, same thing with us when we're in corporate. You kind of get bored because you're doing the same thing over and over again. But the reason why you're doing the same thing over and over again is because the same thing over and over again works. Work. It <laughs> sure. does work. Right? It does yes. work. And I really, I like to boil it down to four things, okay? Mm -hmm. There are four things things that every business since the beginning of time has had to do. So we have to do the same thing in our entrepreneurial journeys and our own businesses. Okay. So the first one is that you've got to be getting new leads every day. 
new leads every day? Do you have a process, a system, a platform? What, how are you getting new leads every day? Okay. I'm going to go through the four and then I'm going to peel them back a little bit. So new leads every day. Second one, you got to nurture those leads. We used to call it the, the customer journey, the buyer's journey back in corporate. Okay. It's, you can't just expect someone that's going to come in a new lead and all of a sudden, boom, they're buying from you. You've got to nurture those leads. I say love on them. You've got to love on those leads that are coming in that you're meeting. The third one is that you have to make offers to buy from you. You have to bring sales in. You've got to bring sales in. Sales all the time should be coming in. Sales should not just be coming in when you launch something. You need sales coming into your business as part of your core business. And then of course, the fourth one is excellent client delivery and keep the clients, like get them to go to the next step with you or have more that you're offering them. It's so hard to get a client. Now you want to make sure that they stay with you. I see a lot of one and dones. It's like, well, here's my course and someone buys a course and then like that customer is gone. Like, no, in corporate, in corporate, the first two things I just talked about was really marketing. New leads, loving on those leads is marketing in any business. Then you've got sales. You always have a sales department in every business, running sales with sales numbers and metrics they're going after. And then of course, everybody knows you better have customer loyalty and you've got to get great customer service and customer loyalty and all of that to keep them. That's the business. Those are the basics. What's happened is that it's just too loud and noisy in, in, in the entrepreneurial space of what's going to work next. And you hear, well, this one did this kind of a launch. Oh, that launch method sounds good. Oh, maybe I want to go and try this platform. Oh, I'm, Pinterest is going to get me the leads that I want. It's so scattered instead of, you could pick any strategy, by the way, they're all going to work. They all have worked for people. That's why you hear on all different podcasts and on different, you know, the constant ads coming at us on Facebook from all, once you declare you're an entrepreneur, forget it. Like all the ads, I don't get ads for Nordstrom anymore. All the ads coming down my Facebook feed is someone wanting to, to share their latest and greatest thing that's going to help me grow my business as an entrepreneur. That distraction is so loud. They all work. If they're all teaching it, it all worked for them. Well, you know, I also think that part of the distraction is about our desire for success that we talked about a little bit earlier, right? So we are so interested in in being successful, especially if you're leaving a court, if you're leaving anything, actually, you so want to be successful and that desire is so deep. So it's very easy for me to ca capture your attention and say, oh, build courses or, oh, oh <laughs> do X or do Y versus the fundamentals, <laughs> which you're hundred percent correct. If you're, if you don't have leads, you're not selling to anybody and you're not making any money. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I always say pick like now that, you know, okay, these are the four pillars of my business that I have to be running when it's just you, it's just you. And you've got to do all four. Okay. Yeah. As you grow, that's where you're hiring right? Mm -hmm. As you grow, that's where you hire. You're going to hire people to help you on the marketing and help people that are going to help you potentially on the sales. And you're obviously going to have like, you know, operations, people, people that are helping with client delivery and service and all of those kinds of things. Right. But when you're first starting out, it's, it's, it's all on you. So you need to be very, very intentional that you pick a path for or a strategy for each of those pillars. So let's start with new leads instead of like spreading yourself so thin because new leads, yes, it could be Pinterest, it could be LinkedIn, it could be Instagram, it could be all the things, okay? Pick one. Pick one for lead generation. I would constantly hear things like, pick one platform and go all in on the whole thing. And it's like, well, why? What, what are we doing? What's the outcome from that platform? Pick a platform that is going to help you with new lead generation. And when you put that, when you get that clarity, oh, it's freeing. Because when you say, I'll give you an example. Okay, so my um, ideal client is 100% on Instagram. I probably wouldn't even be able to find her on LinkedIn. Why am I, why am I trying to go on LinkedIn, right? Okay, it's so Instagram. I'm going to go all in on Instagram to create content for her, to create videos, to make sure that my bio, to make sure that my following strategy and who I'm connecting with is all for her. I can go all in, right? If, if LinkedIn is your path, because you know you've got a, 
you're going to work with people in certain, you know, uh, corporate positions and different things like that. Awesome. Go all in on LinkedIn. The problem is, is when you're a solo, when you're a solopreneur and it's all you, you are going to die by a thousand cuts, right? If you try to like go to every single platform, pick a platform, you can get to a six figure business, picking one platform for new leads. Now, as you grow, your new leads strategy can start to have some paid approaches to it. You can start to pay for those leads through paid ads and things like that. But when you're first starting out, pick a platform, you're going to create the content and you're going to go proactively find your people. Okay. That's your new lead strategy. Then you've got to love on them. You got to nurture them. What is your process to nurture them? Again, there are different things you can do. You could have a Facebook group that you funnel people into that you meet that the new leads coming in. Now you're going to bring them into a container where you can nurture them and love on them, right? Maybe you have a podcast, maybe you have, you know, this awesome weekly email that you deliver. Maybe you do a weekly live free training, whatever your process is, figure that out. How do you take them from first finding you or you finding them and that first conversation? How do you continue them on the journey with you? How do you keep loving on them and nurturing them? Because that is so key. It, it's, people make the mistake of thinking this is so linear that like I meet someone, I get into the DMs with them. We start to have a conversation. And then if they don't book a consult with me or if they don't get to the next step, it's like we kind of move on. It's like, no, you just had a great conversation. Now you need to make sure that you are bringing them further along the journey, giving value, getting them getting to know you, making offers, that, that kind of thing. The next big piece is what is your sales strategy? Let's be intentional about it. Perhaps your sales strategy is I am going to launch my group coaching program four times a year. I know which weeks of the, like plan it out, like know this, like I'm going to launch my group program, you know, four times times in 2021, but in between, I am going to be making sure that I am booking consults every single week so that I have revenue coming in and new clients coming in, in between launching. Okay. That's, that's what, what we do. We, we only launch certain times a year and the rest of it is consults and, and, and bringing people into the program that way. Your sales strategy could be that, you know, you do a weekly uh, a weekly live training at the end of that live training, you make offers to work with you for however that is. You could have it be that you have time booked in your calendar every single week to proactively follow up with all those leads that you've been nurturing to make offers to work with you. But you got to do that last mile of actually doing that and doing that follow up. But what's your strategy? So you got to have a strategy for bringing sales in all the time. And then you've got to have a strategy for what is your approach to not only give excellent customer service, I'm sure everybody that's listening here is going to like, they're going to get a client and they're going to make sure that they're wowed, right? I mean, that's our nature. We're ambitious. We're going to do that. But how do you keep them? What's your strategy? Like, let's say they work with you for three months. Do you have a plan for what they do next with you? Do you have a plan for them to kind of either, you know, go into a new program? Maybe they move into a group program. That's a higher level mastermind. I think maybe they're, you know, maybe they're moving on to, you know, they get to remain at that rate that you gave them at, for the next three months. Maybe you are offering up, you know, something completely different now that you saw what, what, you know, what they need next, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to want to make sure that you kind of keep customers forever if you can, right? Have customer referral programs too, so that these great customers are bringing, helping to bring people in for you as well. So you just have to be very intentional about thinking about those four pillars of your business, pick a strategy and execute on it for a while. Don't say, oh, I tried Instagram for a week and it didn't work. And now I'm done. Like, no, you've got to give these things time to marinate and happen, but pick pick a path, pick a strategy for each of those four pillars. And I promise you, I wish someone had given me this advice two and a half, three years ago, because I, I lost a lot of time and money trying to find that shiny object that was going to bring in, that was all of a sudden going to make my business launch to that, you know, the six figure mark or whatever. Having a strategy, picking a plan for each of these four things and sticking with it, that's what's going to give you the six figure business. Yeah. Wow. And what do you say to people who 
have issues and they have that kind of critical voice around selling and, and setting up this strategy. And would you recommend that these people, I mean, I fall into that category myself, get a coach? Like, is that something that you think is helpful? Oh yeah. I would, I would personally would never not have a coach anymore. So even when I was, luckily I was, I, I knew this from the start. I think it's probably because in corporate, like I always had a mentor in corporate. Like I, I was always matched to a mentor in corporate. You know, I was on the fast track starting young and got attached to different mentors and they taught me like, Hey, you're going to do this. This is how it's going to go. Because guess what? They were where I wanted to be. So if I was going to become vice president and right now I was a marketing manager, well, I want to be mentored by a vice president. What did you do? How did you get here? Right? Same thing applies in entrepreneurship. Why try to figure it all out yourself if someone's already done it and it's worked? And we know, we know that our mindset is critical, right? That every, our whole business is going to live or die with what is between our ears. There's no doubt about that and what's happening in there and how, you know, really checking in on yourself on that, right? You're a good coach is going to give a, a solid mix of helping you through your mindset, but also helping you on proven methods and strategies so that you're not trying to like figure everything out because people have already figured it out. Why do you need to figure that out again? Right. You're going to waste time. I've made the mistake of only working on, you know, with the mindset and still gotten stuck on, well, what, so what do I do? <laughs> right. Well, you know, just believe, no, I'm not going to just <laughs> believe that it's going to happen. Believe. I need to also know what am I going to do in my business? Can we right? get some, like, what can am we I going to do in my business each day? Can we get some practical so, strategies? Can I get a worksheet, please? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I believe it needs to be a combination of, of both. And so, yes, I think that it's so important because what, the other thing too, that I will say, you know, you had mentioned something there around sales and people not wanting to be salesy and all of those kinds of things. And my biggest piece of advice on that is that the better, you know, your ideal client, I mean, you know, them, you know, what their, their thoughts are, their fears, their stresses, their anxieties, like what is going through their brain, you know, so clearly, and you know, that what you have to offer can help solve those problems, so, you know, get rid of those, you know, that get rid of that anxiety, find them time, make their relationships better, whatever it is that you're offering. You can vision cast and you know that if they work with me and they do this, they're going to get here. They're going to get to their, 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 their vision of like what life would be like if this was solved, get into service. I always, I have this saying where I say, stop obsessing, uh, start, str stop stressing over sales and start obsessing over service. The sales comes the more in line you are with who you're serving. When you're thinking about sales, you're in your own head. When you're thinking about how can I serve my ideal client, you're in theirs. So that is huge. And that, that was a major, major shift for me um, to, you know, that I now teach everyone that works with me because we, we, we do so much work to get inside really understanding your ideal client. I'll, women will say to me, well, I help ambitious moms to live a more empowered and purposeful life. I'm like, that's great. That is so high level and so vague and so right. vanilla. Like we got to dr drill way deeper, right? When you right. go, when you do that work to really understand your person, I want you to almost either like cry, get frustrated. Like I want you to feel the feelings that your ideal customer is having, feel the feelings of it, really know what's going on there. And I promise you, you'll never feel like you're selling ever because you're offering your handout to like, hey, I can help you. Right. And I right. always say that's another, another thing I always say is those four words, I can help you. That's huge. You can help me. That's awesome. Okay, great. I'm listening, right? I can help you. So step into that. And I promise you the sales are going to flow a lot easier. Yeah. But, and, and also when you get out of your head thinking, look, I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling, <laughs> right? Like you said, you're in your own head. And when you get out of your head saying, I can help you, I can help you do this. You also kind of light up your passion area as well, right? The thing yes. that you're passionate about and the thing that you want to do, and it doesn't feel like selling. I find, you know, that's sort of yes. my 
sense of it, at yeah. least that when I'm doing the thing that gets me excited, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, even if you say no, we're not right now. I'm just so excited that we had this conversation. <laughs> totally. A hundred percent. And you know what, when you're first starting out, let's be honest, your mindset can definitely be in a uh, the, that scarcity mindset where you're like, I've got to make the money. If I don't make the money, I've got to go back to the job or I got to do this or I'm never going to leave the job. And we can get into that. And, and then the other thing that can start to happen is you say, well, wait a minute. I, I, I don't, I haven't really helped anybody yet. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if you haven't gotten your first client or your first, you know, customer or whatever, you're like, well, I'm not really sure. Can I help them? Usually you go back into, well, if I did it for myself, you got to lean in on that. Like, like, did, you know, what did you do for yourself that you can leverage until you have your first client, right? So like if, if you're a, a weight loss coach and you lost the weight, but you haven't had a client yet, that's okay. Go back to your own journey. Where were you at? What did you do? Did this work? Could you teach this to someone else and they could have those results? Yes, then go and get those first clients. Cause that once you start getting the first couple of clients in your business, it unleashes this whole, like I can't, I, so many things start going into motion. One, you know that what you're offering actually works. You have testimonials. You have belief in yourself and in what you're offering. And then you now know it's possible, like, oh, I can land clients. And that whole energy shift, you know, is amazing. And you get there by taking a perfect action and getting those offers out there to people, telling people that you can help them landing those first few clients. And like, it all starts getting better from there. Yeah. I love that imperfect action. That's a great way to reframe it. And as you say, it just, it starts getting the motion. Motion begets motion. And I mean, I can't, if I were to turn back the clock for myself, I would have got a, a coach, a business coach, what have you at the very beginning. I wasted so much time just waiting for things to be perfect before I made, I stepped into an action. So I love that. Yes. And, and, and the a coach can really help you like, you know, to, to get out of perfection and to, you know, hold you accountable because we unfortunately bail on ourselves before we'll bail on other people, which is how 100%. it goes, right? Always. 100%, yes. So if you have, whether it's a mastermind or a coach and you're in, and you've now told people, okay, I am doing this and you know that you're going to be asked, so how did that go? You know, what were the results of it? if you don't actually do it, you're going to feel like you're letting other people down too. And sometimes you need that extra push because, you know, life gets in the way. Our brain, like it was telling us, don't do that live. Do not do that live. You're, you know, you're going to, people are going to judge you. Don't get on video. Don't do that live. <laughs> but if you just told your coach, okay, yes, I'm going live today. I'm going to tell people what I'm doing and I'm going to make offers to help people. Like you, now you've got to do it. Yeah, so that's like, yeah, super helpful. Well, you say no, I, November 13th, come oh, hell or high water. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing our first virtual event called Questions and Cocktails. So we're like, yeah. all right, we're doing it. I mean, I it. <laughs> it is what it is. You know, but I love that. I think more than anything, the thing that I find personally for me, accountability is really, really important, right? Um, because you're hundred percent. I'm the person who will bail on myself before I bail on somebody else. Um, I think it's almost part of the reason why I wanted to do the podcast with a co-host, right? Part of it, Liz, I love you dearly, <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> but seriously, uh, it, it, like I knew that things were going to get done and I was going to be able to do the things that I could because there was somebody else depending on me. Right. Um, and that was going to be really critical. And I find the same thing with some of my clients um, for SCORE. Um, SCORE is a mentorship organization by the government and I mentor entrepreneurs. And I've got, just in the past month, I remember two women, two black women that I've been mentoring. And um, I sort of, you know, it's mentoring, so it's more telling than asking, which is what we do in coaching. Um, so you're just kind of doing the perfectionist thing. And I was like, okay, this is what we're, this is what we're gonna do. Here's the date I'm giving you. And here's the action that I want you to take by this date. Send me an email when it's done. And it was so funny how immediately 
it was done. And then, by the way, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, but I got the two emails and I was like, oh yeah, yes, I remember we talked about this and you're so right. So even if, you know, cause I think sometimes we think about getting a coach. So it's sort of like, there are lots of coaches out there who will help you endure it for free or inexpensive or anything like that. But if you can't find someone in your life who is going to keep you uh, accountable, a hundred percent accountable because that's how you're going to get things done and supportive as well. Because like we were saying before, I mean, if you've got somebody who's negative and it's negative accountability, then that's not good for you. Yeah. And and it's so true. And I think that, you know, people listen to this podcast, they have dreams, they have goals. There's, there's you, you know, we, we have these desires of things that we want, right. And it's some of its freedom of choice. Some of it is, you know, being able to make impact. Some of it is to, you know, be able to maybe, you know, you know, buy a second home, retire a spouse. I mean, there's so many reasons, right. Of why, and I hate to say it, (laughs) but because I will always hear, oh, but like, stay close to your why and you'll be able to get it done and stay close to your why. No, nope. That why <laughs> is so far in the, like you can't, the second something gets hard, the second like you're afraid to, you know, do those four things we just talked about in your business, like finding new leads, nurturing them, g- making sure that you have a sales strategy in your business, client delivery, like things are going to, you're going to have hiccups throughout those things. You're going to, you're going to not want to do some of those things. And like the idea of maybe someday retiring your spouse, or maybe someday having financial freedom is not going to be enough to move you like past some of that stuff. So I like to say the closer you can get to your clients, why the more you show up. Because I will tell you, you talked about the podcast. When I started my podcast back in 2018, I can remember thinking, is anyone going to even listen to this? I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start and talk about Imperfect Action. It had a different name when I I first launched it and I, you know, made a pivot from there, Um, but I took Imperfect Action. And here's the funny thing. I started to hear from some people. Oh my gosh, this, that was that episode was so amazing. Thank you so much. It was like you were speaking right to me and all of the things. I have never missed a week. I've never missed an episode because I do it for them. Mm-hmm. And so we're at, you know, two and a half, well, just almost two and a half years of doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. Never missed it because it's not about me. It's not about, well, I got to do the podcast because if I do the podcast, then you know, that's going to get me closer to finding new leads to then, you know, growing my business so that I can get that financial freedom that's, you know, out there. No, it's like, I'm doing it because I'm showing up for them. And so when we really can shift into our customers' heads and their whys and how, how we can help them, it's that provides an incredible amount of accountability because now you have to show up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 the whole episode, you've a whole conversation you've been talking about kind of shift, shifting outside of self. And I find that very, very interesting because there are so many other people who would advise thinking about the self and thinking about what you want, right? And thinking about and really framing it from the perspective of inside out versus outside in. Right. So I find that to be very, very fascinating way of thinking about it and way of presenting this information about, all right, think about others. Right. And for those of us, me being one of them who are very other focused, that is, that's fascinating because Part of the struggle for me may be that I have to think inside out when really my way of naturally thinking outside in might be working better for me. That's totally, I have to tell, I, 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 sometimes I tell like women that I work with, you know, look, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I'm going to be cheering you on and all that, but I'm also going to call you out when you need to be called out. And I like to, I like to like make no one wants to feel selfish. No one wants to feel selfish. Selfish is like that word, right? I was trying to avoid using that word. But here's the funny thing. But here's the funny thing. I will say it's not a horrible word. And, and to, just to set the record straight, I've got my, my whiteboard over here with my goals. Like I, I of stay on your goals. Like know what they are. I'm just letting you know that when you get stuck, those goals don't always help you be able to move forward. 
stay to stay like in alignment with them. I love to write them down all the time. I have a journal that I write down my goals and I write them as if they've happened and I get excited about them. But in the moment when I have to show up and like do the podcast episode or do live training or do whatever, move past yourself by thinking of the others. And so what I always tell the women that I work with when they're, they're just afraid to take that next action, whatever it is, they were going to start a Facebook group or they're going to, you know, start, you know, their Instagram account and really start to, you know, find new leads there and all the things, and they just don't want to do it. They're thinking they're too much here. They're too, Mm -hmm. too much in their own head. And I always say, gotta think about the people that you're trying to reach, that you're trying to serve. If you don't, you know, start that Facebook group, that community can never happen. Yeah. So you're being selfish, I will say. Right. (laughs) Yeah. But when you're stuck, when we get stuck, it's about us, right? Exactly. So that's the way out. Yep. That's the way out. The other person. I I love that. That, People. Yeah. That's, that's such a great tip. I I mean, I know we're getting to the end here. So, um, already what else? Yeah, I know. This is so (laughs) great. We could talk to you forever. I I I love talking with you guys. You guys are amazing. (laughs) (laughs) This is so great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so what else? Any last tips before we, we, we get out of here? There's a big one. It's just, it's worth it. It's worth the struggle. It's worth the not knowing how it's worth the imperfect action. It's worth falling down and having to you know brush yourself off at times. You're going to have clients that don't get results with you and are like, yeah, this isn't working for me. And you're going to have clients that are like, you're amazing. This helped me so much. And all. You're going to have the highs and the lows. It is worth it. Most people give up too fast. They've tried it for maybe six months, maybe less, even a year. And like, oh, this isn't working. Stay the course. I promise you it's worth it. It took me a solid year of really not making the kind of money that I needed to be making, you know, having arguments with my husband, like, like, let's be honest about it. Um, you know, really, you know, crying going, like to myself, like, is this going to happen? Like, am I going to have to go back to a regular job and all the things? It took a year of going through all that. It was worth going through that year of that, of figuring it out and trying to do it. I never stopped. So just remember that no matter where you are with whatever's next, because guess what? It never ends either, right? So now I'm trying to scale to a seven figure business, totally different than when I was trying to scale to a six figure business. Well, whole other levels yep. that I've, I've got to get to. I've got to push through some other things inside myself and figuring out how to build a team that I, that I love and all the things. So just know that the, the, the skills that you will learn as you're building your business will help you to then get to those next levels, but you're always going to be figuring stuff out. You're always going to be going through the same kind of process. It's kind of interesting of trying to figure something out, getting, you know, problem solving, getting to that next step it's all worth it. It's worth the hard. It's totally worth the hard. Excellent. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Where can people find you? Yeah. So depending, I mean, I love, love hanging out on Instagram. So Julie started Instagram. Like if you love this episode, like DM me, let me know. Like, I'd love to hear what your biggest takeaway was. Um, you can find me right there at Julie Ciardi on Instagram and you can check out the podcast. It's uh, ignite your side hustle. I think we're going to have you guys on, which I'm so yeah, excited about, yeah. but it's ignite your side hustle. I basically, you know, teach, um, just two episodes a week. The first episode is really to kind of give some quick tips. Like they're like, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes long, quick tips to help them in the week. And then I also have interviews with amazing women that are doing incredible things to give inspiration and also, um, you know, tips and strategies that they offer. So I, I would love to connect, uh, on the podcast as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Julie. We loved, loved, loved having you here this week. (laughs) And thank you for being our badass of the week. Thank you so much. Bye. (laughs) 